Hi everyone, today we're going to have a go at painting some really loose, expressive pine cones. We're lucky enough to live in a part of the world where pines grow quite readily and as my subject today I used a few cones we've been keeping beside the fire for the last few months. I've drawn a quick sketch and I'm going in very roughly with some burnt sienna here using a number seven round synthetic brush and just indicating roughly where the scales on the cones are, not worrying too much about shape or definition or anything at the moment, just getting some paint on the paper. I'm using burnt sienna, as I said, for the lighter, redder colour, and then this is se uh, sepia, which is a very dark brown. I'm using some paper which is, it's a German type and I don't know that it's made anymore, but I'm just using it up. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. I think it's possibly not the best paper I've ever used, but we'll see how it goes. Just refining the shape a little bit here, making the cone a bit wider. And uh, basically just playing with paint dropping the darker colour in to give some shadow, knowing very well this is all going to blend in together, um, and basically experimenting, seeing how it's going to go. That's what it's all about, really. The thing is, with watercolour, you can't always predict how it's going to go. So here I am dabbing out some of the surplus colour I've just put in. That's... Uh, a good technique if it goes too far just take it off before it dries. Now this cone is facing me and so I'm painting it more in a circular fashion again just dashing in the, the scales on the cone and uh, going in with the shadow might make this one a little bit lighter less of the sepia, more of the burnt sienna to give a little bit of contrast. Trying to get some good darks in. Now let's have a go at the, uh, the fur. The needles on the pine leaves are uh, very dark. We're going to paint them in, um, I think this is olive green, or it could be, you could use uh, Windsor green, dark. And uh, we're making the leaves come out from underneath the cones. And it doesn't matter if they touch into the brown and maybe bleed a little, that's just going to add to the overall. Uh, impression of freedom in the painting. I really like doing these pines. You can just let yourself go. Look back to the second cone we did and you can see the colour is spreading quite nicely there. Now I'm thinking about a background and finding myself a larger brush, I think this is a number 12, and just dropping in some clean water in the background, deliberately making the uh, water touch the painted areas so that the paint bleeds out into the background, which will give a, an overall effect of softness, which is what I'm after, because we're aiming for snowy cones here and just letting the colour bleed, letting it do its random thing 
I mean, if you want to control everything you're doing when you're painting, you don't want to use watercolour. You might as well use gouache or acrylic or even oils. You can control every last brush stroke then. But with watercolour, you're better off letting it have its head a little bit. That's the fun of it. And if you watch, you can see the paint slowly moving out from where I put it to where it wants to be. Now I'm going in with a, a rigger, which is a long haired, thin brush. And I've mixed up some white gouache and I'm just tapping the brush randomly to put splashes over the painting. And now this is gouache again with a little blue added to make a light gray. Just dropping that in and spreading it out a bit fairly randomly. Now you could stop here or very soon you could stop but I decided to push this painting a bit further and I'm coming in now with more gouache to indicate snow and I'm going to see how far I can take this and see what happens in the end. It's an experiment. The most difficult thing about painting in watercolour is knowing when to stop because it's actually quite hard to row back from where you've gone. But uh, it's only a piece of paper. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. I'm quite liking the effect that this is giving of a very loose, random, snowy pine cone gesture. You can let your imagination work when you do paintings like this. And when it's dry, it'll be different again. Now I'm just coming in here again with some extra darks, again it's sepia, and just emphasizing the shadowy areas a bit. Ideally I probably would let it rest for a few minutes and dry off a bit before I finish this stage, but I wanted to get this done today. So just a few more touches. Finalize the shape. And then in a minute we're going to set it aside and let it dry. So here's the finished painting once it's dried and um, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this very loose watercolour of a pine cone. Give it a try, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more of the same. Bye for now, see you soon.